Welcome to another episode of Unbox Live. I'm your host, Rob Gagne. And I'm your other host, Nate Beck. And today we are in the studio. Not only are we unboxing some Fratello cigars, but we are sitting next to Omar. Omar, thank you for joining us. Guys, always a pleasure. Super excited to get this rolling and uh, talk about the amazing cigars. Ah, absolutely. So in the chat, go ahead and throw your comments or questions for Omar while we got him here. But we're going to get started right away with... What are we smoking right now, Omar? We are doing, how do you say the first part of this? Naveta. So, naveta, naveta. Naveta. What does that mean? So Naveta stands for shuttle in Italian. So uh, okay. as you guys know, I, um, I, I, I did a good part of my uh, professional life. I was at NASA. And so we created a cigar. It's called uh, Naveta, which is uh, basically shuttle in Italian, um, paying homage to the men and women of the space shuttle program, which was something always fun. And uh, I wanted to create sort of that celebratory blend. And oh, guys, it came out uh, it came out fantastic. We aged the cigar for four years before we launched it into the market. Um, he, but you can tell, man, you can tell uh, aged tobacco when you when you're smoking it, it the, the how how long that finish is, sort of the blend profile. It gives you a lot of those uh, different notes that sometimes don't don't leave the, you, you know don't leave that, that kind of residue for lack of a better word in the back of your throat it kind of very smooth and so yeah that's just basically what we've been able to offer with our wedding beds so mm. this has really good flavors nate you would it's know it's delicious i mean yeah. dark chocolate um we're each drinking a little bit of uh, espresso yeah. i think it really ties in nicely with that dark rich coffee flavor creamy um nuttiness for sure what kind of nuttiness yeah. would you peg this as so for me it's like um it's like the combination of it's like a nutella action going totally. on here you know what uh, I mean? uh -huh. am i right uh -huh. um i've explained this before to some people because it does have that kind of like you know kind of acornish you know flow with you know mixture with like nutella so it's like there's a lot of those things happening to me um everybody's palate is very different yeah. but i uh but the chocolate aspect of the cigar is 100 percent there for sure yeah Nut, nuttiness is an interesting one because that can be oh, a lot of different yeah. flavors like you know nutella of course is hazelnut that's right uh sometimes you get more of a creamy kind of cashew uh i often will find uh if there's a, a bit of sweetness or creaminess uh marzipan which is you know yeah. almond paste yeah. you have that sugar and everything kind of Marzipan is a great way of explaining. Actually, you're right, hundred percent right. Yeah, yeah. marzipan That's or even the other better one, my Nutella, man. Like <laughs> nougat in a candy bar. You know, the actual like creamy nougat in a candy yeah. bar has a lot of that same flavor. Yeah. But marzipan for me is the one that really gets it because uh, you yeah. have sweetness that isn't overpowering, but it's also yeah. you know entirely made up of nuts and sugar. I love uh, that. I love that. That's a way, way great way to explain that. Uh, now I think that's. So. We got to jump over to your website because I got to figure out where this hits in the lineup because you have already an inverso, right? Mm -hmm. so, so this we... is the inverso, yes. Oh, sorry. Navita. Navita inverso, yeah. So if we scroll down to our cigars. Yeah. There's the Navita line. Go to the Navita line. Yep. So something unique with it with Navita is we, um, we mimic the box to look like a space shuttle tile. 
So if you look oh, at that right. box, yeah. <laughs> you see how fun that is? Yep. We created a cigar that has um, basically when you look at the box and you look at the bed of the shuttle as it comes in re-entry, protects oh. the box on travel, it protects the orbiter, you know, from, from catching yeah. fire. It sustains over 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit and re-entry. And so when you look at that box, that's exactly what we're trying to do. So when we inverse the tobacco under Navet Inverso, which is this, we basically use the basically the nose of the shuttle. So if you look at the uh, inside vista of the box, it has a picture of what that shuttle would look like. And so those are tiles as well, and those protect the orbiter. So when we created the box, we put the numbering system that is assigned to each particular tile inside the box as well. So if you look at the front, it has that numbering system up front. What NASA does is NASA tracks each tile for any broken, anything that has a fat fissure, anything that is has been touched, we need to inspect every single one of them. We track it. We use a numbering system. If it works well for the next one, then we use it. If we not, we swap it out. We put a new one. So this has the LBE, 5HH, EHE, 5L5? Correct. Yeah. yeah, so it's a numbering system that NASA uses for each uh, that changes all the time. This is just one, but it changes every single time. And so it's um, it's how we track every tile. Okay. Shuttle. So does this or change for every box or is this no, the same no, for every box? This is the same for every box. Yeah. Okay. okay. Is there any meaning behind this or did you just pull no, this up? No, it's just one of the, sh it's just one of the numbering systems of a tile. Simple as that. That's awesome. That's super yeah. cool. And then the Naveta line has like a specific name for each one. So we use the Naveta Robusto. Is the, Rob the Robusto Discovery for the Discovery Space Shuttle. Okay. We use the Enterprise. We use the uh, um, the Endeavor. And we also use the Atlantis. So those are the four active shuttles before that was retired. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. And this cigar then, there is the regular Naveta, right? So this cigar is the um, the Naveta Inverso. And then uh, what we did with the Inverso line is we used the blend that we have on the original Naveta on the black box, um, and we inverse all of the tobacco. So what we did is we, we, we used the wrapper, and we now put it as a binder in the Naveta Inverso. When we use the binder on the Naveta, now it's part of the filler on the Naveta Inverso. And the filler tobacco that we got under the Naveta line we used a, a co-joining farm that uses kind of those same nutrients of that soil, and we put that as part of the wrapper. Easiest blend I've ever done, but it's called Inverso because we inverse the tobacco. It's yeah. the original blend. Simple That's as that. That's awesome. I love that. And you were saying that was just because you had so much of that tobacco that you had to, like, figure out we what to do with it. We had a lot of tobacco. We had a lot of tobacco because I was we used all of the – for the for the filler tobacco, we used basically we buy all of the tobacco under an Aveta, um under it's a single origin single source tobacco in Jalapa, mm -hmm. and so we buy all of that tobacco. And we're like, guys, we need to. I want to use this in a, like, such a good blend, and we were aging it for so long. It's like let's just go ahead and use it on something else, and that's how Naveta Inversa was born. But we wanted to like I wanted to do something different, and so that's why we inversed everything under the original blend. Sure, and this came out. The Naveta came out. Was it 2017? That's right. Yeah, because I remember you launching that at PCA, right. and I remember the it's whole shuttle, shuttle and yeah. the heavy, like the whole thing. And then, like, too, this cigar has like a really prominent foot band that yeah. takes up pretty much yeah. 50 percent of this cigar. That's right. Yeah, so it's very well done. Very, uh, yeah. Like I mean, just the whole the whole presence. That's right. Of it is amazing. Thank you. Love it. But with the Fratello brand, you have six different blends, correct? Yeah, yeah. So we have uh, the core line is composed of the Fratello Classic, which is the first blend we ever launched. Then we follow it through with the Fratello Oro, uh, with the Fratello Bianco, and then we launched the Fratello Oro out of the Dominican Republic. So the first two, the Bianco, which is Mamaduro, San Andres Negrito, and then we use uh, the Fratello Classico, first launched in 2013. Um, in 2016, we then launched the Fratello Oro. That's kind of my core line. Yeah. So you got that mild, medium strength with the Oro. Then you have the medium body as a razor, kind of very uh, dark, chocolatey kind of, you know, flavors on the Fratello uh, Bianco line. And then the Naveta, the Fratello Classico, which is the first launch we've ever done. That's kind of like my core. Then we have the Spazio line, which is basically the, uh, the Naveta line that launched in 2017. Followed by the Navitin Beds in 2018. 
Gotcha. So that's awesome. my spatula line. And then we have what we call my carnivale line, which is my fun skull. It's basically carnival uh, in, in, in Italian. And uh, that's the Fratello Arlecchin, um, which is a cigar that I've been fascinated with. I love yeah. it so much. It's, We've been uh, smoking that a lot. Every you've been man, here. I've been on fire with a cigar. And it's, uh, it's basically uses a San Andres Claro on that. And then we use Ecuador tobacco as well, uh, Peruvian and Nicaragua. So with so. the sure. San Andreas Claro, Claro just means lighter, right? Yeah, it's a little just lighter. So typically a Mexican San Andreas wrapper is real dark. Yeah. Like real, real dark. Yeah. And this is more on that medium shade. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And so then, too, does that mean the aging process is a little bit less intense as far as heat? And, yeah, yeah, that plays a that? role for sure. Okay, that plays a role for sure. Um, but it's just that the the, the that that's the type of tobacco. That's how that tobacco comes out. It's very dark, very oily, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, but it's different primings as well. If you use the higher primings, you're actually going to get also that very you know very dark chocolatey color. But okay. if you don't, yeah, that's what we do with the Naveta, with the uh, Arlequin for sure. And then we have what we call the Regionale line, which is cigars that are launched for specific regions. We have one coming out very soon. We'll be making an announcement on that uh, hopefully soon. Um, but we've done like the Texan, uh, which yep. is something, a cigar that's a 718 by 58. It's a big boy. Everything is bigger in Texas, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was not the reason we did it. Um, but it was a very unique cigar because it's one that we use eight different kinds of tobacco. And it's one that um, you know, people have really been able to put it in their rotation for those larger ring gauge cigar smokers that want a lot of flavor. Sure. It's a three hour smoke, man. I mean, if, unless you're smoking it really fast, like I saw one dude put it out in 45 minutes. I was like, bro, dude, that's too, too fast. Much. <laughs> it just heats up too fast. I love the fact on your website, you have the strength profile indicator yeah. on there. It's super helpful. Like if you go yeah, back up yeah. to the classic line, um, go all the way back up. So I I think I smoked the Oro and was blown away by it. Yeah. Absolutely love that cigar. And I'm betting yeah. right now. I don't know. I haven't looked at this. Is it medium bodied? Yeah. So we it's, oh, it's on, on the, the lighter side. It's on the lighter side for a for a for God, it has a lot life. of flavor though. Um, yeah. But for <sighs> me, in terms of like the body, and I think this is some something that we can definitely always, you know, do a very good job in terms of explaining it to the consumer. We try to keep it easy uh, simple. Um, one thing to me is the profile of the strength in terms of like how much nicotine content you're receiving through that cigar. Mm -hmm. in, the, for the, in the case of the Fratello Oro, this will be on the lighter side, I think. Right. But in the case of the Fratello Oro, for when you're talking about the body of the cigar, when you're in the mouth feel, right? How does that body feel? It's more definitely on the medium to medium body plus. Okay. Because okay. you get a lot of those flavors. Yeah. Sure. You know, so the way, best fun. way I can explain it sometimes is like, it's like wine, right? You can right. have a wine that has a body mouth feel in the medium medium body, meaning the full body profile, but the alcohol content on that can vary from 10% to 14%. Absolutely. So very, very Crazy. different things. And I think that's fun when you can kind of mess with people's perceptions yeah. where they look at a cigar and assume, you know, it's a lighter to maybe Habano wrapper and they assume it's going to be not quite as strong and that can knock their socks off nicotine yeah. wise, but have a really light, maybe even yeah. slightly acidic flavor to it. Um, yeah. or a thinner mouthfeel and then you've got these really rich looking cigars yeah. that are lower in nicotine but have this rich you know full body that's mouth right feel. Yeah. that's right oro is a perfect example where you brought that up yeah I, I mean right away when i lit it i was like oh my god i love this cigar yeah now let's compare it to this one the inverso like <laughs> yeah. what is this one hit on that profile so th th this is the kind of stuff i like because i like to guide myself through a decent website that'll tell me where yeah. I'm at. So mm -hmm. if we click on the inverso, then what is what's going to happen with what we see as the profile? So oh, medium, yeah, yeah. Perfect. I mean, you guys let me know. I mean, because a lot of people, um, to me, this is also very subjective. Me as the blender of this of, of these cigars and the guy who comes up with a, with the profile on them. I when I smoke them, it's you know it 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 has a tendency also depending on what I'm eating, depending on what I'm enjoying. To give it a different body feel. To me, sure. right now, I'm feeling this cigar after I had the Arlequin more on the medium body plus side. You know what? I wouldn't say necessarily medium to full, um, but it's not killing it as, as a straight up medium body. It's got that medium body plus right now, but it also depends on the moment you're smoking. I think that's uh, what do you guys think so far in terms of body for the cigar? I'm a horrible judge of that. I just, I taste flavor. 
I love that. So, so I mean, I you heard it here today, people. You taste great, flavor. great flavors. flavors. Yeah, it's definitely think? rich. Yeah, um, I would go medium plus. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's rich. I mean, it's got almost a silky mouthfeel to it. Yeah, um, I think that's where it hits that like Nutella chocolate. Yeah. Where everything gives you kind of a rich, um, almost viscous mouthfeel. One hundred percent. Yep. One hundred percent. I kind of equate it to like when your teeth stick together. Yeah. You know, like it's a little, <laughs> like a little chewy. Like I, I love, love that. that. Yeah, but it's cleaner than that because like sometimes like really oily tobacco will be like very sticky, yeah. chewy. Mm -hmm. This is more like you said, clean on the palate. Really. Yep. Um, I don't know. Yeah, one hundred percent. I'm so bad with flavors, but I'm just like it's good. It's yeah. good. I got good and bad. This is good. Cool. Yeah. No, you enjoy it, man. If anyone out there can post in the comments what Fortello means, that would be interesting if you actually know without Googling it, but you can Google <laughs> it, I guess. Let's we'll see how fast I put it. Yeah, exactly. I like the rockets here right in the Yeah. That was in the details. In the details, yeah. There's always like Easter eggs on bands. And don't you have stuff on the back of these bands? So I don't. Um, okay. but I, I I've seen other companies do it. I think it's very unique. Um I, I call it the 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 Chinese little cookie, uh, yeah. uh -huh. cookie uh, concept. The, the best one that I've seen was, uh, I'm trying to remember who did. It. I think it was an LCA release, the My Blue Heaven. Oh, okay. Sure. So, you know, you see this band and it just looks like blue sky. There's nothing on it. There's no, there's no writing, no words. And then when you get ready to take that band off and you peel it off, hidden under the overlap, is a picture of Steve Martin and Rick Moranis from the movie My Blue Heaven hidden under there with that uh, movie poster on the band. Love it. And I think that's a, I think that's a riot. But even your bands, they always go at an angle and that's for the shuttle type look, right? So no, so the um, the reality is what we were looking for is uh, I wanted to I wanted to create a brand in a band that you could recognize from like 10 15 feet. Mm -hmm. say that's that's a fratello mm -hmm. that was the original goal for the fratello band really it something yes it was i wanted i was thinking the first band was a beautiful red i was thinking barber pole i was thinking new york city music hall i was thinking new york city barber you know uh, uh barber stores and barber shops around the corner that red coca-cola flow and our, our designer did an amazing job in coming up with this design but um, I also was looking into a band that you can take out of your cigar and it wouldn't ruin your cigar. And a lot of times, you know, this is the easiest band to take out in the it entire is industry. Really All easy. you got to do it and it's gone. That's it's it. It so, doesn't break your wrapper. No. It is really annoying when you go yeah. to take that band off. Yeah. And now you're having to pick it with your finger to kind of peel that off. And, and especially if just leave it out. You got to take it off then. You after do. That. And, and if it's a substantial band... And you're waiting till it gets warmed up, you know, warm yeah. enough so you can actually peel it off. And you're getting dangerously close. Yeah. And now you got to pick that band off. And so, you know, you're trying not to get wrapper in and there. And my problem is that the, once you get down that low, the tobacco has so much uh, good moisture in it. You know, you want that. Yeah. But it it softens yeah. the cigar. 100%. So then when you're trying to pick it off, you're like squishing the cigar. Totally. Digging your fingernail in there. But yeah. so this, the cockeyed band was really just to make it so... It was recognizable, but yeah, I guess it worked I, to me it looks ways. like a shuttle tip, like yeah. the rocket ship. So that's cool. That little rocket ship. It's uh, I I'm gonna make that into a shirt because people have been asking me all over the place. It's like, hey man, this rocket tobacco ship is amazing. Can we make it into a shirt? So maybe yeah, uh, be coming soon and something like that. There you go. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And so for those of people who don't know what Fratello means, it, it, it go ahead, Omar. It's your nickname, brother in Italian people. Um, brother in Italian. Yeah, I um, I was being a smartass in college and taking an Italian class, and I learned that means brother. And I would call people, "Hey, what's up, Fratello? What's up, brother?" And they just a back a lot of control, man. You don't choose your parents, or you choose your nickname. And I land in the Dominican Republic, and I'm known as my fratello. It's insane. Really? I love it. Yeah, man, 100. percent That's fantastic. It. But that fits well with the cigar community. I mean, everyone, we've talked about it. it. It gets talked about all the time. You can sit down next to all different classes of people and share a cigar. And I think, yeah. I mean, unlike a bar, maybe maybe it's like a bar. I don't know. Is it, it is. like a bar? Because bars, to me, tend to... I think to, it's better than a bar. Well, yeah. That's where... I, yeah. The influence of alcohol on some people is negative. Yep. So with cigars, it, it seems to be like it's always positive. Yeah. Yes. I don't... There's not a lot of people I get interacted with in a smoke shop that I'm just like, oh boy, 
Yeah. Don't want to interact with that person. Uh huh. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. It's one of those unique things about tobacco. I I have found that there is no better time and place to have great deep conversation with your yeah. with your friends or even with a new friend than over a cigar. Yeah. There's something about the calm and peacefulness of smoking a cigar that allows people to feel open, relaxed, you know, vulnerable right. even yeah, to share sure. things they wouldn't share any other time. Yeah. It's like going to the, it's like going to the bar, man, having a conversation with your bartender, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's being there for 20, 40 minutes, you know, after everybody closes and you're still having a drink, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? You experience the same thing with a cigar or a new friend or whatever. And you're having conversations. It's the only time, man. And we've had this conversation before, uh, you know, when I was having an event and um, I, I've struggled with finding a place where people um, of entirely two social classes and economic classes would ever find themselves smoking. I uh, was having an event at Draper's a few years back, and there was a guy that was just literally done with his routes in UPS and was smoking the Fatalo Classico. And uh, a high power lawyer that owns the entire building, making over $1.8 million a year, sitting and having the same conversation over the same cigar. Those right. two individuals, guys, will never, ever, ever be in the same place other than a cigar store. Right. It's right. and I and I always challenge people to think about a place um, where two people will be enjoying something together. Yeah. Okay. Of those two social economic classes, it isn't going to be the bar. Right. It is not going to be the, they're not drinking the same alcohol. They're not enjoying the same football game at the same seats. Um, and then I had one guy one time. Well, prison. That's the one area where they both will definitely <laughs> share something, which, but they're not enjoying it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Definitely not going to enjoy that company. All yeah. right. Absolutely. Mm. With the Fratello line, with coming from NASA, there's a ton of articles, ton of interviews that you do with NASA, talking about your history in NASA, and that's all out there for people to go check out. But you really came through the ranks at NASA almost like an entrepreneur. Yeah. I mean, you you have an intense career path. I mean, becoming a G5, G15 before you even turned 30, two out of 18,000 people yeah, did that. Yeah. And then you in Silicon Valley myself. Yeah. And you hmm. kind of got not bored, but you were kind of like, okay, I've done it all. You did 12 years at NASA. 12 years. And now then it's like, okay, now what do I want to do? Yeah. I, I, I started and I was very, um, I was very entrepreneurial with my, with my experience at the agency because I wanted to grow to the ranks, but not just simply to get more money, but it was also because I was driven uh, to to have different experiences, and so you know, I did my I, I would do three years, and then I would get bored, and then I would have to do something else. And, sure, um, but I would find different opportunities and different challenges in the in the in the agency. So, I've done program and project management. I've done business development and business management. Lean Six Sigma for uh, the CIO. I did it for uh, uh, human resources and equal opportunity, and then. Um, managing a $5 billion budget, which was my last job. And these are all different challenges that I had the opportunity to face. But I um, I would be the first one in. I would be the last one out. I would work harder than everybody else. And it wasn't it wasn't a mistake that I was able to rise through the ranks. Was, oh, my God, Omar's like a really nice guy, and he's tall. No, I was working hard. Yeah. And I, I was getting distinguished performance evaluations three, four years in a row um, and, uh, and getting promotions and getting uh, uh, races. And so for me, it was... Uh, I did treat that experience as a as a as a, an entrepreneurial version, but I I needed something else, and that's kind of how Fratello got started. Yeah, so you decided to say I need to create something. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to create something that I felt passionate about, not just to create something. And um, I I could definitely be doing a lot more things that can make me way richer than what I am right now. But this is something that I enjoy. Yeah, that's money's just I, money. Money's just money, man. Comes yeah. in, goes out. It it never ceases to amaze me, and it pops up a lot. Eighty-five thousand dollars a year yeah. is the mark. That below that number, there can be vast differences in your level of happiness. Yeah, but once you hit eighty-five thousand dollars a year, above that dollar amount, there is no measurable difference in your level of happiness. Really? No matter how much higher you go above that mark, hundred percent. And that's, that's always blown me away. Yeah, I've never eighty-five thousand dollars. Yeah, actually. So if you're making a million dollars a year, you are no happier than that guy or that woman that's making eighty-five thousand dollars a year. Yeah, just more more stuff to manage, huh? More stress too. Yeah, more, I mean, and I I landscape when I was first married, I worked for a landscaping company, and we did 
primarily all maintenance and we worked in a lot of nicer developments. And when we'd be looking in the backsides of these homes that had just massive windows, these houses would be half empty. Yeah. And many of them had rented furniture Whoa. because they were so over extended to get that house on the golf yeah. course. Now they're in debt for their car and for their boat and the yeah. house. And now they don't have furniture to fill this massive house. You tell me yeah. how that's any more enjoyable yeah. than my wife and I with five kids being cramped in 2000 square feet mm -hmm. where my kids all have to share a room. Yeah. Guess what? My kids make great roommates. Yeah. They're yeah. not hard to be around because they've had to actually deal with trouble with their siblings. Yeah. You can't go hide anywhere. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's its own, you know, bag, yeah. of, bag of worms, if you will. You know, I traveled more way more when I, I, I remember when I, when I, went and then through that jump of making i started making thirty nine thousand four hundred and fifty dollars when i first had a position at nasa as a gs9 okay in 2004 so i was like i gotta get out of this right a little bit fast yeah so yeah very driven by by money at that time yeah uh but then all of a sudden i remember when i went from a gs12 to a gs13 and i experienced the jump from going like you know making seventy thousand i guess it was to making eighty five thousand or eighty six thousand i was like whoa I think mm -hmm. I am rich. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I remember it so well because I was like, why don't we take a trip, baby? Let's go ahead and go yeah. to like Europe somewhere because she was making good money at that time. I'm like, whoa, like this is definitely a different experience. But yeah, I traveled more during that time. Um, and for about three or four years when I was like between, you know, I'm making way more money than I was making at that time now. But even at that point, it's like I'm traveling way less for leisure than I was at that time. Right. So there is no 100 percent so much truth to what you're saying. Yeah. You know, uh, the bigger the house, the bigger the problems, the bigger the investment, the bigger the expenses. It isn't like, you know, you start making more money and now you have all this extra because right. you live the same. Your life just starts to That's increase right. and bump up to That's meet. Right. And fill up all that extra empty space. And so now you've got more things and you owe more money. And all of, the, all of those things are fine. But the, yeah. the thing, come back to cigars. You can be sitting on an inventory of 5,000 cigars. Yeah. All exceptional, beautiful cigars. But if you never take them out and enjoy them with the people that you care about. Oh, yeah. It's just leaves in a box. 100%. Yeah. There's nothing important to that. You just, you can tell people that you own it. Yeah. The only reason you have those things is so you can share them and enjoy them with people you care about. Yeah. yeah. That's it. I agree. And, yeah. and it's interesting to say, here you say that you were traveling much more yeah. at a little lower income level mm -hmm. right? <laughs> than you are at a little higher income level. And I think that's pretty true for most people. There's a, there wasn't there a commercial that said, you see this boat, it's mine. You see this house, also mine. You see this beautiful car, also mine. And I'm in debt up to my eyeballs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it never fails, man. It's like, uh, but but I but listen, I think you know, going back to what you were saying about enjoying a cigar with somebody, I think that's such a critical aspect. And I think that's what kind of has been the biggest um, uh, takeaway from COVID. Uh, people are a little bit they may be a little bit more better interconnected through webosphere and social media and whatnot, but it also plays such a big role with your significant other. And we've seen a lot of that people mm -hmm. smoking together with their wives, people smoking together with their, with their girlfriend, with their partner, whatever that is. And it just, it connects, man. And I Absolutely. love what I've seen post uh, COVID because be before that I would see it more on the road. People were go to their pre preferred tobacconist and they would, they'd still, they're still doing that. But instead of sometimes staying and hanging out and doing the cigar with everybody else or spending more time with their families. Sure. Their yeah. yeah. That's interesting too, because I mean, you're literally on lockdown. Yeah. So you have to do the same stuff that you enjoy. And then you didn't even know that it was going to impact your significant other. 100%. So that's great. With um, you always being out on the road, what are some of the places you look for to eat? Because sometimes road food can be difficult. Yes. So what's your kind of go-to when you land? Um, so I'll tell you, uh, my experiences has, has changed throughout the years. Um, at the very beginning for the first five, six years, um, I'm a big fan of Guy Fieri. I love, you know, what he has done with like, you know, diners, drive-ins and dives. And so what I would do is 
because there would be so many of these places in the city, I would look and search what are the places that he had food at. Sure. And then I'd go and like try it out. So sure. I did that for five years. I'm probably one of the only, you know, and maybe Eric Espinosa now that he launches a cigar with him. Maybe yeah. he has had more of that experience. <laughs> and Garantia probably have even more places that this guy is on, uh, um, you know, an episode in, especially in the D.C. area because he did quite a few of them. Um, and 80% of the time he was dead on right with some of the stuff that he was doing and I loved it. Um, and then after, for, after those five years, I'm like, okay, I probably visited every single city in the United States of America by this time. Let me go ahead and change it up a little bit. So next started value by Following more, let me go into you know some of these different steak. I'm big on steak. I'm big on seafood. Let me try different stuff. And so I started more getting into that realm and trying to eat a little healthier. Um, and then after that, it's been more uh, me appreciating when a, a retailer or a friend invites me out and they you know invites me to their house and we were having a dinner or something like that. And it's more like that home cooked meal. That's the grand prize that right I there. Appreciate yep. way more than anything else. Yep. That's, I've, I've always said like, and I haven't traveled internationally very much, Yeah. but even, even traveling in the U S if you can get invited to somebody's house yeah. for dinner, regardless of what you're eating, that's, that's the, that's the pro yeah. right there. Right. Cause now you get to experience somebody's home, yep. somebody's, you know, family, that community, they're inviting you into their home. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think we do enough of that in the yeah. United States. Yeah. There are a lot of cultures that entertaining a guest is mandatory. Yeah, for sure. It's just you, there's no question that you would do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and here we're a little more we're a little more aloof sometimes with that. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. We sure like eating out at. Uh, we like good food at Boveda, don't we? Oh God, yeah. We've got a good few food. of us that are foodies, and so when we good food at Boveda. Yeah, when we when we were looking for restaurants. Uh, our head of product, uh, uh, product development, product management, he's also a big foodie. And so he and I will put our heads together and we have found at restaurants that we've been to, uh, especially in Las Vegas, you know, at yeah. the trade shows, the best dishes we've had vegetables, really? like knock your socks off. Good. Like we had a meal a more the meat eater. Right. And so we had a meal at bizarre meat for okay. TPE just yeah. this past January. Yeah. And the sommelier there is just spectacularly uh, welcoming and gracious. Uh, his name is Lou uh, Centenat. I think I'm saying that correctly. Yeah. He uh, served us the year before, remembered our table, brought us all these unique wines to try, uh, paired them with some dishes that we didn't order. And one of the dishes we ordered was a Brussels sprout salad of all mm. things. And it was uncooked Brussels sprouts. All the leaves had been peeled off. So there was kind of like just a pile of little tiny almost like iceberg lettuce leaves. Yeah. And it had this uh, uh, lemon citrus, like vinaigrette and foam with it. That counter counteracting with the rich meats that were, you know, so prevalent on the menu was such a great counterbalance. It was the best thing we had that night. I love that. It was fantastic. I don't think I've ever heard anybody, you know, say that their favorite meals, you know, and the things that they have found the most has been vegetables. That's yeah. probably, I'm always about saving the, the leaves of actual leaves or stuff, <laughs> you know, like lettuce or anything like that. Save that. You can keep that in the back. Bring me the steak. But yeah. Right. Maybe I'll start. Maybe I should do it a little bit more. Maybe I'll lower up a little bit of yeah. the uh, eating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Become like Rob here. Nice lean and mean, <laughs> man. <laughs> I can't put on weight to save my life. So <laughs> no, that's for sure. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. I've been fortunate in my, my, my previous life. I, I ran a food business and you would get to eat some exceptional meals and some yeah. really unique regional flavors nice. uh, from some of these chefs. And by and large, the things that were often the most interesting and the most wow. carefully thought out were dishes that were predominantly vegetables love that. um i do love some brussels sprouts oh it's delicious oh, sprouts. Oh. and so often you see them you know like so very crispy corny. or caramelized or roasted yeah. and to have something totally different yes that's actually fun. completely raw was very interesting i'll go check that um, out bizarre well and in vegas stick. we went to carson kitchen carson kitchen that's carson good. kitchen you got to go there. Really? Oh, it's yeah. fantastic. It's off the strip, old downtown Vegas. It's like a block from Fremont Street. No kidding. Amazing. Yeah. What Great style vibe. Of food? I would say farm to table, uh, 
very, very much chef, uh, like chef up comfort food. Okay. Um, like crispy chicken skins, uh, you know, oh. fried crispy chicken skin. Mm. Uh, they that do pork honey. belly that's dressed with a buffalo beurre blanc sauce. So basically, buffalo sauce is uh, Frank's Red Hot with mm -hmm. butter dressed over chicken wings. So they oh. did that same thing, but then dressed over individual bites of pork belly. Uh, again, one of the best things on that menu was a, a panzanella salad, which is a bread salad. And it was so spectacular. The tartness of the vinaigrette that was on that salad yeah. just cut through all that other fatty, rich meat. Uh, uh, they do a Mexican street corn salad. So instead of elotes, mm -hmm. you know, on the cob, they basically everything is deconstructed. So the corn's off the cob. It's got pickled mm. chili peppers, fresh tomato, mm. um, little bits of shredded uh, cabbage in there to add some extra crunch. Spectacular. Wow. I'm gonna and it's to go super and check affordable. That out now. I, honestly, like super affordable. Most in for, for a restaurant to put out that quality of food in a super casual atmosphere, like open beams. Yeah. Uh, the tables are made with like concrete legs and kind of reclaimed wood almost on the, on the tabletops, open kitchen. So you can yeah. see everything that's getting prepared. Uh, super, almost like biker tattooed vibe for the bar area. Right. Um, great drinks, great cocktails. Uh, it's in an old two story, like 50s, 60s era motel. I'm kidding. So there's a big corner sign, like neon sign that, you know, very vintage, but is original to that building. Yeah. Um, what is that name of that restaurant that's close to the strip as well? That Sinatra and the Rat Pack used to go to the Golden something. It's uh, um, the Golden Steer. I think that's I think right. The Golden Steer. That's I think right. you're right. Um, now that I think about it, I do go there for the steak, stuff like that. I'm not a huge fan of the steak. But I, I like the steak quite a bit. They have a great prime rib, but I remember their Caesar salad. Yeah, really. It's fantastic, bro. Fantastic. Caesar salad is done right there. It is their own twist, and it is the best Caesar salad I've ever had. It's so humble, you know, because you're taking ingredients that are yeah not very you know swanky, right? And to to create flavors with you know something that's just literally come right out of the ground, as opposed to this big beautiful you know yeah. sexy steak. I think that's really intriguing to me. Yeah, you're very right. I'm gonna pay more attention to that. Maybe Carson Kitchen right is here. great. We'll have to take you there. Uh, yeah, in July is great. Let's do it. I've heard the best steakhouse is at Circus Circus. Interesting. Have you been there? I have not. I heard that it's like walking into uh, a Chicago style steakhouse. No kidding. In the middle of Circus yeah. Circus. Haven't been, but I'd be interested to see what you say about their meat I'm because I heard now. it's like the best steakhouse in las vegas okay. yeah I, we heard several people I, say that multiple people say yeah that, so i'm like super circus intrigued. circus 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 next that's gonna be yeah <laughs> people look at you crazy like where are you going, well, I'm going manny, to go circus, circus. get experienced manny by the way one of the best seers i've ever seen in the state where manny's this place in minneapolis that we went to yeah fantastic seer oh my god yeah I mean, it was Perfectly like crusted. it was like these guys did it well. It wasn't because a lot of times when you do a when you do a sear and a steak, you got to be careful. You don't you don't surpass too much sure. the steak. So it's in the yeah, yep. then you burn too much of the inside of that steak. You want it so be juicy, crust right through it, but then go into your medium rare aspect and the juiciness of your right. steak. So when you're biting, you're not biting too much on that burn area. Right. That you have. It's just a good balance. These guys did a great job. Yeah. Yeah. That place was, I'm going to say, for the sake of argument, like 2014, 2015, mm -hmm. Esquire Magazine listed them as the best steakhouse in the U.S. Wow. And the thing that I like about I'm Manny's, because we, I've been there multiple times. We took my daughter there for her birthday right before COVID. The service is so over the top. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, sir. Yeah. You know, you want an entire plate full of, you know, huge bacon crumbles. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Does that end up on the tab? Nope. Yeah. You know, your the wine. bacon crumbles were a huge. They're like big lardons. They're huge, right? We, we, we got a couple of dishes, the, the wedge salad. Yes. And then the potatoes came with bacon. Yeah. Wedge. Yes. Like, and we're not talking like, you know, little bits. We're talking chunks. They're oh, not yeah. Sprinkling that. They're no. literally putting that in there. No, yeah, bring you a whole plate of Yeah, I want to start yeah. crying when I hit that bacon. Man. Yeah. Like, oh, Jesus, this is so, good. so good. I'm a scotch guy, and I will often go there just for a drink. Yeah, because they 
they're so generous with their pours. Like, you know, normally you get two ounces of a scotch mm -hmm. and that's maybe average, you know, 15, 20 bucks for a decent scotch. Yeah. They pour four, maybe six ounces. Love them. And, yeah. and it's the same price as for two at any other bar. Right. Uh, and those servers, they make good money. Mm -hmm. But how cool for a server to have the permission to go absolutely whatever you'd like. It's huge. Because yeah. they know at the end of the night, you're going to spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Yeah. What's, you know, an extra plate of bacon. Yeah. Right. No, who cares? Right. It yeah. was great service. That's just, that's not seeing yeah, the force for the trees. It was fantastic. I'm glad you guys, I'm glad you guys told me about this place because I, I enjoyed it. And that crust will be remembered forever. Yeah. <laughs> the steak master himself. If that's you ever right. want a good steak, which steak you did you get, get, by the way? So I got the New Year's trip. Okay. I always get the New Year's trip. Um, I try to stay, I think that's the best cut. I always try to remain consistent with my, with my choices of, sure. of steaks because um, then I can really compare. You know what I mean? And then when I go around again and I do my next round, then I'll choose a different cut. Sure. So I can remain consistent. It's like, okay, so I've had the best New Year's strip here. I've had the best ribeye. I think it's the best cut of meat by far. Because, the strip? Yes. I, I agree. 100%. Absolutely. Um, the the, the ribeye is always great, but the – that sometimes if the steakhouse does not know how to very well cart, you know, so that you have, yeah, that extra fat content. A lot of times it's too much. It they is too much. You know, yep. they don't know how to manage it very well, especially yep. if it's in a cast iron skillet or if they're doing it kind of on the grill and then putting it back. So I just don't trust it as much as I trust a very well done, a very good, well done yeah. uh, steak like a, like a New York strip. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Not well done in terms of cooking. Please mm, not don't yeah. ever mistake not, that. Not okay. well done. Uh, medium rare yeah. people. Medium That's rare. a nice shout out in the kitchen. Shoe leather on table twelve. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had a friend of mine uh, uh, come to my house uh, about a few weeks back, and we, I was doing steaks, and um, you know, one of my buddies was like, "Oh, well, yeah, yeah." It's like I'm just going to ask, just as a courtesy, okay? I am going to ask you guys, how would you like your steak cooked? And this was a test because there's no way anything is coming out of my <laughs> cast iron skillet if it's not medium rare. Mm -hmm. So one person says, oh, yeah, yeah medium rare, Omar. So, okay, points for you. But it's in my head, right? Then uh, the, the girl says, uh, oh, I like it well done. It's like, okay, you're dead to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then another person says, medium rare, fantastic. So I cook the steaks. Everything is ready. So um, one, <laughs> one person gets... Uh, you know, their steak, it is medium rare to perfection. The other person that says medium rare, here's your medium rare steak to perfection. The other one got a good slab of chicken. Uh-huh. That's what they got. Yes. They didn't get no steak. No. You will eat chicken. <laughs> and it I'd will love be a well done chicken as yes. well. Yes. And then it was it created a nice fun environment at the house, but yeah, I refuse. Yeah, mm -mm. right. I refuse. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I'm not that. cooking. You're gonna get. You're gonna get pork. Well done, pork. Oh, you're gonna get some well done chicken. Yeah, but it ain't gonna be steak. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Unless it, I'll get it, you some USDA me. select. Yes, right. Then at that point, oh. I'll do it. <laughs> Rump roast or something like that. <laughs> oh. No bueno. Mm -mm. All those people that grew up in the Midwest of the United States eating meat and potatoes cooked to death. Yeah. They're the people that still order, you know, well done steak because that's all they know. Yeah. Right. And they're afraid of it. We, my wife and I uh, took her aunt and uncle. Uh, we were in Nashville and they were always gracious to let us stay with them. So we wanted to treat them to a nice dinner. And there is a great, I'll say farm to table chef driven restaurant in Nashville called the tree house. And yeah. it's, if you're ever in Nashville, check out the tree house and they have a bisteca alla Fiorentina on the menu it serves like three to four people. So I said, we're ordering the steak and my wife's uncle looks at his wife and he says, Bonnie, you will eat this steak as the chef prepares it. Cause she likes well done. Mm -hmm. He said, and there'll be no complaining. She's mm -hmm. like, okay, I'll try it. <laughs> so we finish our meal. I'm like, Bonnie, you actually ate some steak. How did you do? She goes, that actually was delicious. Yeah. I think I still like well done because it's so ingrained in her that it yeah. has to be all brown. Right. But I'm like, it tasted good, right? Nice and soft and almost buttery. It's like, yes, it did. Mm -hmm. Like, see, now you've learned something. Exactly. That's right. That's right. Exactly. But you got to keep the movement going, man. Mm -hmm. don't, don't don't give the people that tell you, oh, I want the steak medium well. It's like, serve no. them chicken. Uh-huh. Serve them chicken. chicken. <laughs> 
have that backup for them. That's amazing. I swear to God, man, chicken for you. Chicken, chicken for, for you. you. <laughs> That's it. That's all you get. And you look up well done steak in the dictionary. Chicken. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. At Omar's house for sure. Or pork. I love it. Oh my God. It's so true though. Well, mm. this has been a lot more talk about food than anything, which is great because I'm getting hungry. So we got to cut the cameras because we're hungry and we need to go eat. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but we appreciate you joining us at another episode of Unbox Live. This has been Omar. Omar, thank you for joining us. So much fun, guys. Thank you for having me over. Check Great out, to have you. Yeah, check out some Fratello cigars. Head over to their website. See what they have. See what you, you like in your portfolio. There's plenty to pick from. Yeah. And as always, thank you for joining us this Friday. Cheers. Have a great weekend. Cheers, everyone.